Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone this morning uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just thanking Him for this time that we have. We can come together and look into the Scripture and in the message of the Prophet William Brown. So uh, it's a great day here in Florida. We're uh, kind of passed through most of the storm. Of course, there's still people having problems that are flooded and so on, but everybody's getting some semblance back uh, to normal anyway. So we're going to look this morning uh, over into Revelations 21, but before we do that, we want to uh, open up with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you again today. Lord, we thank you for your care and your love and kindness toward us, Lord. Lord, we just, we just don't really know what we would do without you. Lord, you said we can do all things with you. But Lord, without me, you can do nothing. So Lord, we just trust that we'll never be in that condition because you said that you'd always be with us. You'd go with us all the way even to the end. So Lord, we, we count those words as our blessing and our promise, and we claim them and thank you for that. So Lord, we pray now that you'll uh, be with us and guide us today as we look into your word and the message of the prophet, Lord. So we pray one thing, that you would get glory to yourself, that you would continue to reveal yourself to your people. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, <clears throat> let's uh, look over in, into our Bibles, and I want to read out of Revelations uh, 21. I want to start with, we could read the whole verse, but uh, let's save time and so on. Let's just come on down to about... Uh, verse 16, and you notice up here uh, in verse 10 of 21, and it said, He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And then he goes and starts to describe in this city, this holy Jerusalem. But I want to pick it up and from here about verse 16. And uh, let's read from about 16 down to probably uh, maybe about verse uh, 23. Verse 16, And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are all are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubics, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, as the city was of pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third with chalancy, the fourth was emerald, the fifth with sardonyx, the sixth was Sardis, the seventh was Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth was Topaz, the tenth was Chrysophorus, the eleventh is Jacinth, the twelfth is Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold. 
and it was trans, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, that's quite a city. And John saw it coming down. So, Lord, we know that the, the book of Revelation is a book of symbols. And, Lord, there's only one that can kind of break the symbols, and that's you, Lord. So, and we believe that you've done enough this day, Lord, to let us see the city. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we want to uh, give this a title. We want to call it. Uh, the Pyramid City, the Pyramid City. So he's, he sings his holy Jerusalem, then he, it goes on and calls it a city. And of course, a city has, has citizens, and you, if you're a citizen of the city, you have citizenship, so this goes all in one because you can't have a city uh, without people. Because if, if you got a city without people, you, you just don't have a city. It takes uh, people to make the city. But the, let's just say this first. The foundation, according to what they said, I think it was Apostle Paul said in, in the scripture, the foundation of this city is the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. And then Brother Brown said, the cornerstone has become the headstone. All right, so, so he's, he's measuring this, this city. And then uh, in the message, the, 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 the future home, Brother Brown, he gave us a, a hint. He said, now, if you take this and... and break it back down, he said it would be 1,500 miles. And then uh, in verse 17, because all of, all of the, the measurements of the city, if you, the breadth, the length, and the height, are, they're all equal. And some people say, well, you know, well, I don't know, yeah, breadth, height, well, that could be, somebody said that could be a cube. Well, no, they're, they're all equal. And Brother Ram gave us the, the whole revelation of this when he told us what this measurement was. And that's why we're calling it the Pyramid City. And I was think John in his, because now John's on the Isle of Patmos, he's seeing all these visions. It, it said he was taken away in the spirit. He saw... John saw the city coming down. Well, Brother Brown saw it coming up. The city was being raised up through time. And it's, it's the same city. And then he said he measured, verse 17, and he measured the wall thereof, 140, 100 and forty and four cubics according to the measurement of a man that is of the angel all right so when you start <clears throat> to me when you start talking about 144 and so on that kind of brings me back to that we're kind of bringing in israel somewhere because that is the number that was identifying them in the book of revelations over there in chapter seven and verse 18, and the building of the wall was a, of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city, now this city has a wall, were garnished with all manner of precious stones. All right, so we got the foundations <clears throat> of the wall, and they got all these precious stones. And evidently, there's 12 foundations to this. 
And the first foundation was jasper, the second was sapphire, and the third, he goes, he names all of these precious stones that were the foundations. Now, if you look at these stones, these stones would take you right back to the birth stones of the patriarchs of Israel there. It starts off with Reuben, it goes all the way through, through the, the, the 12 tribes. So this whole foundation that we're talking about is these stones to me are representing what the foundation was actually being built up on. Because if you're going to build something, you got to have a you got to have a, a secure foundation. And it said, verse 21, and the twelve gates and were twelve pearls. Edward's several gate was one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. <clears throat> so we got 12 gates, we got 12 foundations, and that reminds me of back in the beginning of Revelation, there was four and 20 elders. There was 12 and 12, and Brother Ram said that, he said the 12 of the Old Testament was the prophets and patriarchs and so on, and the 12 of the New Testament was the apostles. All right, so if we, now we're bringing everything together because God's not leaving anyone out of this. This here is a complete city. So we got the 12 foundations are the stones of Israel. And then if you read up here, the beginning, the gates, and the apostles of the Lamb on them. So you got the you got the stones and you got the pearls. You're talking about precious jewels <clears throat> that God is representing here in this city with. And I wanted to to bring this in to to show how that. He's using the same stones out of the Old Testament. Now he's come over here, the, the stones that represented Israel all the way through, their birth stones and so on, that he always used those. Now he's put them over here in this city. And it said it's the foundation. And if you look in, and there's other places, but I chose uh, Exodus 39, and just read a few verses here. And this is 39 and verse 7. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the breastplate of cunning work the like of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. It was four square. And I, was, I was just thinking, well, you know, he's got this here is four square. And then in the book of Revelation, there was a city four square. You reckon that's just coincidence? Or is he trying to maybe give us a hint here? And it was four square made with the breastplate, double a span in the length thereof, and the span, the breadth thereof being double. Okay, what it was, it was four square. It's, it's length and breadth were the same thing, and it was double because this that goes on this ephod was going to be called the Urim Thummim, Thummim, and Brother Ram said it was the birthstones of Israel, and it was. I looked it up this morning, just trying to get a little extra on it, and one place they called it the breastplate of judgment. Well. That's exactly what Brother Brandon said. He said back in the days when somebody told a dream or something, they'd take him before the hearer and thumb. He told his dream or his prophecy or whatever it was. <clears throat> he told it. And he said if, if all those lights didn't come together to make that supernatural light, they said, forget it, ain't nothing to it. And so he said that was their hearer in front of them, their hearer in front of them, thundum. He said ours is the word 
All right, so all these things were on here. Let's see how they were put together. And this is verse 10. And they set it in four rows of stone. The first row was Sardis, Topaz, Carbuncle. <clears throat> this was the first row. The second row of emerald, sapphire, and diamond. The third row of Ligur and agate and amethyst. The fourth row now is beryl, onyx, jasper, and they were enclosed in ounces of gold in their closing. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet every one with his name according to the 12 tribes. So if you took <clears throat> all of these and from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the names change a little bit, but it comes and works out. It's the exact same stones that's in this, this Urim Thundum that's over here in the foundations. And if you don't, this ephod, <clears throat> Was a, <clears throat> was a sacred vestment worn originally by the high priest. And of course, then on this on top of this ephod, it was that garment they was talking about, then on top of the ephod was the Urim Thummim. So, and uh, it was called the breastplate of judgment. Okay, now that'll give, that'll give us a little foundation of what we're looking at here now, <clears throat> because God is not leaving anyone else. Some think, well, the Jews think it's all the Jews. The Gentiles think it's all the Gentiles. But that's not the case. So we're talking now about this, <clears throat> this pyramid city. And God has chose this symbol of this pyramid because it was going to represent what he was doing here on the earth. And the first statement I'm going to get through out of the, the message is, is Revelation chapter 4, part 3 there in the Revelation series. And, and notice in the pyramid when he built it in the time of Enoch. You know, people say, oh, it was the pyramid. Yeah, the pyramid of, of Giza, the one over there in, in Egypt. It was built by Enoch, and I've read all kind of stories and so on, studies <clears throat> of the, the pyramid, and they say, well, this one built it, and this one. No, I never heard anybody say Enoch built it. And Brother Brown said he built it because Enoch was before the flood, and God had Enoch to build this for a sign. So, and it's, it was a tremendous sign because it's still there today. So it, this pyramid <clears throat> was built in the time of Enoch. Every stone was in there. They could measure them things just exactly and tell the wars and things. Everything is complete but the headstone. All right. So in this, this pyramid, when they take the ascending and descending corridors in there, they measured it out and they could measure by these, these ascending and so on through the cubits, they could measure them to the time and it come out almost to the dot, but there was one thing about it. The headstone never had been put on. And we know who the headstone is. The headstone is Christ. He said, why? Notice on your dollar bill. Take it out and look. The cap's off of it. Why? It never was capped. Christ is the headstone that was rejected. He was rejected. The headstone, he's coming back pretty soon. Watch how that church way back there in the Lutheran age, way wide at the bottom, then become minority, a little bit more minority, a little bit more until it comes right down after it leaves the Pentecostal age. Of course, we know the Pentecostal age is the Laodicean age. Then comes right down to every stone to fit right in, put that cap in there, a church 
that will bring Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever, just as perfect as can be. Now, he was the line of the tribe of Judah, and that's exactly how he come back. So it's going to bring Jesus Christ. This church is going to bring Jesus Christ back because that's what he's coming for, his church. And he couldn't, when he redeemed us at the cross, he couldn't come because it had seven church ages to get the people. But after the church ages, my goodness, the church age is finished, he can come. So, and so the church has got to get just as perfect as it could be. All right, so this church has got to get right up to the top because he said, it's a, it's, a, it's a pyramid city, and he said Luther, it was wide, but it's coming more in a minority all the time. <clears throat> and this is in uh, Abraham's covenant confirmed there in uh, Long Beach 61. But notice, in the building of the pyramid, now watch this. He said, you got a dollar bill in your pocket, I think I got one. So if you notice in the back of Dollar Bill, why? They have got, the pyramid says, the Great Seal. You ever notice on your American dollar? The Great Seal. Notice on that pyramid also how it starts at the bottom and keeps coming up. This minority, minority. Did you notice? The capstone's not even on it. Neither is the pyramid cap. Why? The capstone was rejected. Jesus Christ ahead of it exactly. Notice that in the Lutheran age, what did we live? Justification. Way down there at the bottom. Platting the foundation stone. Luther, Wesley, we believe in sanctification. Come up in the minority. Pentecost, still baptism of the Holy Ghost. Up in the minority. But watch. The church goes right on to the end of it right out at the end of that, that church is going to have to be so perfectly like the ministry of Jesus Christ till when that stone comes, it sets right smack in the groove. Oh, hallelujah. Well, look here. The Luther, that age is over. Wesley's over. Pentecost is over. And we're all the way up here. It's been completed. And he said, that church, he said, it's got to be so perfectly like the ministry of Jesus Christ. Well, you tell me where the ministry of the prophet William Branham missed that this day. He had signs and wonders and miracles. He said, I am a son of man revealing the son of man. And he'd done everything, even had the Messiah sign. The sign that identified Jesus Christ 2,000 years to the people that predestinated when they seen that, they said, that's him. Well, the same thing was done this day. If that was him in that day, that's him in this day. But the people said, oh, no, 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 We're, no, 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 that one, no, yes, no, yes, it was. That's, but they can't accept that because it's a gift their own teachings and so on. No matter what God would do, they will not, they cannot accept it. But for the elect, they say, glory to God, hallelujah, amen. I see that. I see that. He has returned just like he said he would. Now, in the 70th week of Daniel there, in 1961, Brother Raymond makes this statement. He said, now the pyramid started to represent the church. The pyramid started to represent the church. Remember, we're talking about a city. We're talking about the one that was in Revelation 21. But John saw it coming down. Brother Brown sees it pushing up. <clears throat> so the pyramid started to represent the church wide at the bottom. And as it comes up closer to the top, it becomes, becomes to come more into like a funnel shape. Now we find out, let's get right up to the very peak of the top. 
and they never did complete it. I wonder why. If Enoch could build that thing and he could build it all the way right up to the top, but he didn't put the headstone on, why? Because it was going to be a mystery. And God was going to use that as a symbol, as a sign for the believing people this day that we would have something to point back to. So, he said they never did complete it. Why? Well, he said, I wonder why. Because the Bible said the headstone was rejected. Well, when the headstone come, 2,000 years ago, the headstone was Christ. And what did they do? He come to his own, and his own received him not. They rejected him, and not only did they reject him, they had him crucified. That is a real rejection. So that's why the headstone never was put on. So that we can look back and see that it needs a headstone. And it will have one. So he said... The headstone was rejected. And you know what? The headstone by the world, by the world of religion, has been rejected again this day. What more could Jesus Christ have done to prove that he was the headstone? My. Turn water into wine, produced and fed 5,000 people with a couple of fish and a few biscuits, raised the dead, my goodness, open blinded eyes, stopped the storm, walked on water, and they say, oh, well, yeah, we know he does all that, but he's doing it by the devil. You can't, you can't trust that kind of stuff. Well, what, what was they doing? They couldn't do nothing but refute and reject. And it's the same thing today. I don't care what God is doing or has done. They will not recognize it. Why? Because they can't. It's not for them. It's for the believers. The predestinated ones that have been predestinated to it. You can't reject it because you're part of it would be like me standing here and telling somebody, well, this is, this is not my arm. And they'd say, well, there's something wrong with you. Well, somebody that's claiming to be the Word and they reject the Word, there's something wrong with them. Because you are part of it. We're not part of the Word in the past. We're part of this. This is our time right now. So, they rejected. Now, let's carry on with this 70th week. Now because they're in shape, see where it gets shaped here like the pyramid. The arising of the saints makes the march into glory. You understand now? Christ the headstone, the rejected stone, the all-seeing eye. Remember on the back of the dollar of that pyramid, that big all-seeing eye? Who did that represent? Oh, they say that's that, well, I think that's the Illuminati. This is, no, it represents Almighty God. Let them call it whatever they want to. They don't know nothing about this. And I don't know nothing about what they're talking about and don't want to know. So, the all-seeing eye coming exactly like the Bible said. And Daniel said he watched this Gentile age until the stone come out of the mountain that wasn't cut with hands. They never put a cap on that pyramid. It wasn't cut by man's hand. It was God's hands that cut the stone, you see. And where did it hit the image? Right smack in the feet. Well, you know, he's talking about Nebuchadnezzar's image. Gold, silver coming on down. Then you get in the feet, and then what was it? Iron and clay? And Brother Brown said that that was Eisenhower and Khrushchev, those two kingdoms. Well, my goodness, that was back in the, what, the 50s? 60s? My. And the people say, well, one day, feet is end time. And it hit it in the feet, not in the head. Hmm. 
So, and it hit the image right smack in the feet and broke it to pieces and ground it to powder. Hallelujah. What happened? Yes, what happened at that time? The coming of that stone. Up went the church into glory at the rapture because it ended the Gentile dispensation. God ended it up, the coming of that stone. Now look here. The stone that hit it in the feet, that stone that was cut out of the mountain is Christ. Christ is the headstone. And it's all this is coming at the end time. The end of time. And he said, this what does this cause? It causes the Gentile dispensation to end. What is that? That's the church ages. And the people say, oh, well, now the church ages didn't end. Well, they might not have ended for you, but for the believer they did. Because when they ended, up went the church. Well, they say, I didn't see nobody leave. They said, you know, we're, we're, we've we got to fly away one day. No, no. Look here. Heaven is right here. All around. It's just a dimension faster. And the people, they look in the, I guess they look in the fly off like one of the, the rocket ships or something. You got to fly maybe a, a hundred million miles or whatever it is. No. You just step over here. It's right here. It's all around us. Raptured. Caught up. Caught up in what? Caught up in the revelation of the word for your day. <clears throat> so it ended. <clears throat> oh, no, it didn't end. No, okay. It didn't end for you, but it did for me. Future home. And he starts out, he says, now, listen real close while we, because now we come in from where he was talking about this in the Revelation series, and he talked about this in the 70 weeks, and now the seals have been revealed. All the mysteries, there's no more mysteries now. This thing is wide open. Because the seals revealed what went on in the church ages. So he's telling now in the future home, he said, now listen real close while we draw these dimensions. Uh, he said, and he goes back and he raises the backboard. And he starts out. And he says this, here is a deep revelation from God here. Now when the prophet is standing there and he's telling you, here is a deep revelation. You think people's ears would go boing. Listen. Look here. So he's going to bring out a deep revelation. And he goes on <clears throat> in his future home. And the whole title is the future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride there in 1964 in Jeffersonville. He says, <clears throat> notice now the earth. When you turn over into the book of Revelation, you can see how he measured it by the cubics and by furlongs. 2300. So now we find out that the city is measured and it's 1,500 miles square. 15, so he gives us the measurement there. And he says in our terms, in our terminology, because we over here, we, we do with miles and feet and so on. Now if you was back over there in Europe somewhere, you'd have to say, well, it's so many kilometers, but we're not in Europe, we're over here. And he was talking to us. So he said it's 1,500 miles miles square. You know how far that would reach? I measured it off this week. It would reach from Maine to Florida, from the eastern seaboard 600 miles past west of the Mississippi. In other words, half of the U.S. just for the city. And he said, you say, well, there ain't no room. When the sea is gone, there will be because pretty much four-fifths of it's in water. That's right. 
the explosion dries up the sea, erupts the earth. Oh my. Remember, 1,500 miles square. What a city. And But remember, the sea is gone. And the breadth and the height are the same. That would make it a 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles that way, and 1,500 miles. The length by the breadth by the height, 1,500 miles. Think of it, transparent gold, and the city had a wall around it. So now he's given these dimensions and so on, and he said it's 1,500 miles. So 15, 15, 15, right up. And he said now, Brother Brown draws illustrations on the backboard. See? The length, breadth, and height. He said, we're going to get into something sure as the world. See? Notice, the dimensions of this angle is exactly the same. All of them. The length by the height. Another measure. The pyramid proves it. Now, so he's this city that we've read about and the one he's talking about the one he's illustrating is the one that we read about in Revelations 21. And it's not a cube because it's 15, 15, 15. And it's a pyramid. A pyramid city. Because, if, look here, if it was a cube, Christ couldn't cap it. You know, years ago, when I got the, uh, the pyramid that Brother Brown had drawn up and he had the church ages and he had all the, the fruits that was coming up to the top and the last one was, was love. The headstone, love, divine love coming down. And as soon as I, I seen that pyramid picture of Christ, the one that they had they had taken out there in the desert the one that was in Life magazine. I took that picture and I, I, with the, with the uh, copier, I reduced it down to where that, that, that pyramid, that picture of Christ, sat exactly on the top. And I didn't even really know, but I said, it fits perfectly. And glory to God, the headstone had come down. The whole world could see it. But they couldn't see it. It was, it was everywhere. Look here. We could see it. And we did see it. So it had come down. It had come down to cap the pyramid city. And the pyramid city was us. Brother Ramadan told us that New Jerusalem is the bride. And it didn't go up like this. It went up like this. And he come down in 1963, the, the headstone, the headship, the head to the body coming. Boom! There was it. It was complete. And they couldn't even see it. And they're still, they're not there right there looking, well, if he's not here today, He'll be here tomorrow. We're, we're looking for him. And you wonder, well, that's exact. If you're still in Laodicea, you need to read the characteristics of Laodicea. They're blind, poor, wretched, miserable, and have need of nothing. You can't give them nothing because they don't need nothing. You try to share some of your, your oil with them? They say, oh, I don't need that oil. I've got plenty. All right. So he's, he's drawing out. He, now, he, now, of course, people have read this. They say, well, you, I don't see what that's such a, a deep revelation. Well, if you're part of it, it would be real deep. But if you're not part of it, you say, well, you know, that's, that's wonderful, I guess. So we know why the city had to be a pyramid. It had to be a pyramid so 
Christ could come down and fit perfectly because the rest of the pyramid, he said it was so, so built so perfectly that you couldn't even hardly run a razor blade between the stones. How did they do that? All those thousands of years ago. Huh. Because we were actually at the pyramid there in, we took a, a trip overseas, we went to Israel, Rome, and Egypt to the pyramid. And we saw that big thing, and it, it, it's big. We went inside it, and all these kind of things. But I don't care if you see it, you go inside without the revelation of it, it's just a big bunch of rocks, big bunch of stones. And you wonder, well, my, they've really done something back then. Yeah, they really done something, but it was there for a sign. Huh. All right, so he's given us all this information on the pyramid because why? The pyramid is us coming all the way up. That's what, when he's talking about that pyramid, we're not talking about no pyramid teaching and that kind of crazy stuff. We're talking about it that it represents the body, the church, the one that God has come down to cap. We're not talking about stones somewhere. We're talking about people. So he said now, the length, the breadth, we said we're going to get him something as sure as the world. Yes, we, we sure did. Praise God. He said, see, notice the dimensions of this angle are, is exactly the same. All of them. The length by the height. There is another measurement. The pyramid, he said, that proves it. Well, that does to me. Now, this being, this away, would answer exactly Enoch's sign in Egypt. The pyramid. So, Enoch's sign in Egypt was the pyramid. We know who the builder was. Would it? Enoch, before the Andalusian destruction, when justification was coming in, he brought forth a sign, and in this pyramid is seven steps going to the king's chamber. Watch, on the seventh step, if you ever studied the dimensions of the pyramid, what comes out to take the oncomer to introduce to the king? Watch. Whose station is that standing there? And you'll see the day you're living in in the pyramid. And we're going to get some more on the seven steps. But he said, there's seven steps coming up to the king's chamber. And we know who the king is. The king is Jesus. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's a king of glory. He's the king of the city. He is the king. And look here. When you go up these seven steps, that's what you're going to. You're going to see the king. Sing that song. We're going to see the king. Well, we have seen the king. The King is Jesus Christ. The King is the Word. And if you've seen the King and you don't know the Word for your day and your hour, you have not seen the King. Hmm. So he said, watch what comes out to take the oncomer to introduce to the King. And you'll see the day that you're living in. Well, Praise the Lord. Because, look at here. You're supposed to see the day that you're living in. You're supposed to know the day that you're living in. Look here. This is no longer some great big mystery. We know what God has done. The, look here. I'm not talking about mysteries. The mysteries have been opened. And so we can see clearly. <coughs> Used to be that song. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. 
Yeah, the sun is shining bright, full strength. And Brother Brown says, now, this is still in the future home. He said, now, I could drop a little something in here if you want me to. I want you to, Brother Brown. Go ahead, drop it. Drop me, drop me a hint. You know, Brother Brown said, he said, I have to say things in kind of a hint. I hint at it. I just can't say it and come out and just say it out. I have to hint at it. And he said, I have to say things in a roundabout way so the elect will get it. And the rest of them, <laughs> right over the top of their head. And they say, what in the world is he talking about? You know, I just can't understand. Well, if you had the one that sent it inside of you, it wouldn't be a problem. And the one that sent it was the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is supposed to be on the inside of you, revealing to you Jesus Christ. Not just the man 2,000 years ago, the Word for your day. The present tense truth. Like Brother Brennan said, look here, you can't get warm by a painted fire. No way. I used to, you pass by these, these billboards on the sign on those hot days and they'd have a picture of a 7-Up or a Coca-Cola and that thing, that picture would have ice all around it and those, those chill bubbles coming down. Look here, it looks so, and it looks so good, but that didn't do your first one bit of good because it couldn't help you none. And neither has somebody painted something up somewhere else. It takes the reality of everything to produce it. Okay, now, <clears throat> so he's going to give us a little, he said, now I could drop a little something in here if you want me to. I want you to, Brother Brandon. He said, did you notice the little group here is just about that part, a circumference it covers Georgia, California to Saskatchewan from Kansas to the rock-bound coast of Maine. That's what's gathered. That's about what's represented here, about 1,500 miles square. And he sings that little song, Oh, they come from the east and west. They come from the lands of far to feast with our king to dine what well, on man thou shalt not live by bread alone but by bread word to dine as his guest how blessed these pilgrims are so he's talking about he's now he's starting to represent the believers with that city to dine with the king because the king has come glory to god Look here, the, it, the, the pyramid proves it. Thy king has come and called for thee. But they say, oh no, no. I used to hear them saying, the king is coming, the king is coming, praise God. Well, let me tell you what, the king has come. But look, look, why didn't everybody see it? Well, why didn't everybody see him 2,000 years ago? Just a little bitty small group seen him. Of all those people that saw him produce all the miracles and fed them and everything else, only about 120 got in the upper room. My. You thought they'd have had to get an oratorium or something. Of the, big, of the big cathedral somewhere to hold all those people when he said, go and wait. But no, it didn't take that many. Okay, so the pyramid represents the church. The pyramid is a symbol. And people, they get so taken away, <clears throat> they get so taken away with the symbol, they miss the real thing. Look here, most people, they go back here and read Revelation 21, and anybody else that's depending on their intellectuals, their mind, their education, or whatever, 
They'll never get it because it don't come that way. They say, well, you know, hmm, this, boy, this is, boy, this is, boy, this is really a city. Amen. It's really a city. Still in the future home. <clears throat> and he goes on, he said, and I'll be changed from this creature that I am. When that day comes, for I'm going to that city, I'm bound for that beautiful city, I feel the redeeming power in my whole heart right now. If this isn't so, then I throw my life away. I've taught others deceitful things, but when I look down and see the promise He made of this day, and see it vindicated, my, <laughs> whoa, when I look down and see the promise He made for this day, and see it vindicated, what vindicated, see it proved, well, something had to happen, and look at this 1,500 mile square congregation set here, an elect that's been called from denomination and races and creeds and things gathered together. As I see the world, the word vindicating itself, I know beyond one shadow of doubt, the jewels of my crown will outshine everything in the world at that day. So look here, he keeps going back to his congregation. Well, praise God. I'm part of that congregation. You say, well, you wasn't back. I am by predestination. My. I'm part of the, 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 the message of the apostles and prophets in Jesus Christ Himself because I'm part of it. Because I'm part of the Word. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's really good. The promise he made for this day and see it vindicated. And look at this 1,500 mile square congregation set here and elect that's been called out, come out of her. Yes, mine. Hmm. Back to the future home. Now notice how beautiful, see, and in this pyramid was seven steps. And then the king's chamber. Then the king's chamber. Well, my goodness. Have, have, they, have, they, uh, uh, have they walked up those steps? Well, let's see what he said. And in this pyramid was seven steps, and then the king's chamber. And we're in the seventh church age before the king takes his song. And remember, the pyramid never did have a capstone in. Okay? Seven steps. And then you come up to the king's chamber and the king takes his throne. Well, when... He came forth in Revelation chapter 5. He came forth off of that to take His own throne. He went from a lamb to a lion to a king to call for His queen because He took the book. He claimed what He owned. But no, no. Uh, some people say, well, you know, He took the book. Oh, well, I, I agree he had to take the book because if he didn't take the book, he couldn't loose the seals. But you know, he took the book and then he went and sat back down. No, it didn't say he went back and sat down. It said something happened. He was no more a lamb, but he had become a lion, a king. Lamb, Jesus Christ, a sacrifice. Lion, Jesus Christ, the King, coming to take His kingdom. Hmm. So these seven steps, seven church ages. And what happens? Before the King takes His throne. Well, let's see, now He has taken His throne. 
He has come to take us home. He said, He that overcomes will set down on me, set down with me in my throne as I have come, as I have overcome and set down on my Father's throne. That's Revelation 3. Well, whoosh. after that, what happened? John, our type, said, Some said, Come up hither. And one sat on the throne. My. Whew. All right. Now this is uh, where he makes a reference to this, this pyramid and this chamber once again. This is how the Feast of the Trumpets. He said, now, go into the prophet's chamber and watch them seven steps. Where did the guard meet the challenge to bring the comer into the presence of the king? At the top of the steps was in the seventh step. That shows that we've come again with that same spirit that was on John. Well, the, what was the spirit that was on John? John the Baptist. The spirit of Elijah. He introduced the Messiah. He was greater than all them prophets. He introduced it. And we've got to come again to a place again to something that's going to introduce the Messiah? Well, what was his whole message about? He said, as John the Baptist forerun your first coming, he said, my message will forerun your second coming. Oh, my. So, to introduce the Messiah. Then he goes all over the country producing the Messiah sign. Well, your name is this. You, the doctor said this. You come from here. This, that, and the other. Exactly. Hebrews 4.12. The Word. A discerner of, discerner of the thoughts and intents that's in the heart. The very Messiah sign. And then people say, well, the Messiah, He'll be here. He'll come and walk around and I guess He'll come out here and shake hands with us and, oh, will He? My. So, that shows we got to come again with that same spirit that was on John. And Brother Brown said, I have introduced Jesus Christ to you. But that went whoosh, over their head. God's only provided place of worship. And that's a that's that's a that's a big statement. God's only provided place of worship is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the Word. And He's not the Word of history. He's the Word of now. And we've got people worshiping a historical God. When he's not historical, he is here right now fulfilling the word for our time. And that is his only place of worship. That's there in Shreveport, 1965. The pyramid being those foundations up to the king's chamber. And just before you hit that seventh wall, there's a little introduction plank there where a messenger comes out to bring you to the king. The messenger, John the Baptist, that introduced to the king, but the headstone was rejected. Okay. John says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Identified him. And what did they do? Oh, they said, well, he's wonderful. You know, he's, he's healing our sick and he's feeding us and doing all these wonderful things. But one day he said, you know, I and my Father are one. It's not me that does these work, but my Father that dwelleth in me. And they said, what? what? Hey, well, that man, he's making himself God. Uh -uh. No, it was God making himself a man. They had it just backwards. But anyway, they drummed up something and they crucified him, rejected him. But you know, there was some people there that didn't reject him. They accepted him. And 
they don't know the stone of scone or whatever it is. They don't know where it's at because it's a rejected stone. But the stone that caps the whole thing, that makes it the pyramid through the complete seven church ages, add grace, add this, and there's seven ads, the last one is Christ. Add this to your charity and grace to your grace and something else and something else till it gets to Christ the headstone and I'm at the door. Now, so we're everybody should be after this. They should be saying, "Well, my goodness, I'm looking for that headstone. Where is that headstone? It's got it's got to come on that pyramid. It's got to come on this body. The pyramid represents the church, and the church is His body. But a body's no good without a head. Hmm. It takes the head." the intelligence to come to the body. You have to have the headship. All right? So, but look here. Now, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Well, this title should tell you what's going on. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. The mystery of God is revealed. Christ, the Word, is the mystery of the Word revealed. It's all about the Word. We have Satan's answer. God has vindicated himself. God proves himself to his promise in this day. Hallelujah. Headship is here. Amen. Christ, the risen Lord, is here in the same power of his resurrection that he ever was, manifesting himself. There's the devil's answer. So when somebody asks you the question, tell them Christ is here, manifesting himself. There's the devil's answer. That's the real true answer. And they say, well, that ain't the answer that I was looking for. You know, I was really looking for something else. Well, no doubt you were. You wanted some old church aid creed or something. They say, well, one day we're going to all fly away. Yeah, I don't think so. He said, because you don't fly away. Uh -uh. You know how you, you know how you get away. You believe away. You have to believe. And if you don't believe, you're not going there. I don't know which way. Christ, the mystery of God revealed. What is it? Not them people. The headship and the body. Has, H-A-S, has become one unit. Now, that's pretty simple. Headship and body has become one unit. It's God manifested in His people. Look here. It's God manifested in His people. What, doing what? Fulfilling the word for their day. And when you fulfill the word for your day, that is God. That is God in reality, the word being made flesh. But no. Can't handle that. That's the reason the husband and wife is no longer twain. They're one. God and His church is one. Christ in you. God's great revelation. Glory to God. Even bearing His name. His name is Jesus, the anointed. 
You know what separates a bride and a wife? The bride is going to get married. The wife is married. And the only thing that separated them was two things, two little words. I do. I do. And that's what the people this day, they said, I do to the word of this day. And that's how you take his name. Even bearing his name, his name is Jesus. So he said, there's Mr. Jesus and there's Mrs. Jesus. Same name. That's different designations. Because, look here, we're one. We come from him. And we've now been rejoined with him. And that's what the whole thing was about. To get us back together Again, the cap on the body, the pyramid. His name is Jesus the Anointed. The reason He is called Jesus, He is the Anointed. It's the anointed body of Christ. The anointed body of Christ. Not the one from 2,000 years ago. This one that's come up. This it's been shaped up like the pyramid, the body, the anointed body of Christ proving, manifested God like that body did. And that body redeemed every of these bodies and through there God works His threefold manifestation going to the kingdom, risen, paid the price. We're redeemed. We're redeemed. Well, my goodness, that sounds like Revelation 5 again. My, that thing just pops up all the time. We're redeemed. God has proved it. Well, how did He prove it? He sat there through the church ages as an intercessor, as a mediator, all that time. But when they finished up, he couldn't come till they were over. When he come, he moved off of there. Come and changed something and became the line and took the book of redemption. It says he came and took the book. He said, God has proved it. In another place, and he said, you know, the seven seal proved it. Well, yeah, the seven seal proved it because it revealed Revelations 5, what had really happened there. We're redeemed. God has proved it, vindicated it, see. Understand? Yeah, well, one thing about it. The elect will, the predestinated will, the one that has that seed that seed gene germ on the inside, they will. They'll see it just like the woman at the well did, just like all the rest. Could you imagine that woman at the well? What kind of condition she was in, and she goes to get some water, she's not expecting nothing, and all of a sudden a man says, bring me a drink, and the conversation goes on. And talking about her, her, her husband, she said, I, he said, yeah, you told the truth. You had five, and one you win now is not your husband. She said, well, sir, you must be a prophet. He said, I am he that, that speaks to you. She said, you know, we know when Messiah's coming, he's going to do this. And boom, she dropped it, and she took off. Well, that's what the real people do today. They drop all that other stuff, all that other stuff, and they were talking about, well, you know, you worship here, and we worship here, and all this. They dropped all that, and boom, she was gone. Praise the Lord. And we were too. We dropped all that other stuff. I put on a little clip on Facebook the other day. I said, Brother Branham never came to give us church age leftovers. He came to give us the fresh kill. The fresh kill of the word. And that's what he done. And all of these things we're talking about is fresh kill. He said, now this is a deep revelation. 
And it is very deep. But, it, you know, it's so deep that he says the city is 1,500, 1,500, 1,500. He said the only thing it can be is a pyramid. The pyramid city. The pyramid city is the believers. Jesus Christ has kept it. 1963 brought him back to me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. Lord, when we look back and see the condition we were in, Lord, the woman at the well, she looked good. How we were all messed up with this life and everything else and maybe wanted to do right and didn't even know how to do it. Where to go? Where could we go to find truth? Where could we find some solace for our soul? But Lord, all of a sudden, while we were grasping and trying and searching, the Word came to us in the form of the voice of the prophet, Lord. And something on the inside says, oh, hallelujah. That sounds so good. Lord, I want more. I want more. And Lord, you said that this word, this revelation, would be unfolding all through eternity, Lord. And I truly believe that. And I look forward to it. So Lord, we thank you for what you've given us today. And Lord, we know that we can never exhaust the goodness and grace of Jesus Christ. So Lord, we thank you for this today. We give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our husband. Amen. God bless you.